Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new webinar by Centro Studi Galileo. My name is Silvia, and I'm happy today to guide you through this event. As you will know, the topic that we will face is efficient and safe systems using H2L refrigerants. Uh, let me start by introducing the quick rules, the guide to, uh, to this webinar. The event will last about one hour. Each speaker will have 15 minutes, then a few um, short sessions about uh, five minutes for Q and A's, and then a final debate. Uh, you can ask your questions anytime. Please use the Q and A button here uh, and the control bar. Otherwise you can also send them via chat to me. Uh, the speakers will be available also afterwards to reply to your questions in case there is no time for all the questions today. And if you don't manage to see the whole event or want to see it again, please don't worry because we are recording it and we will share the, the video with you. So let me now uh, introduce the speakers today. You can see them in the webcam. Uh, we have with us uh, Luve, uh, Luve Group and uh, Nippon Gases. If we can go to the next slide, we have the titles of their presentation. Thank you. So we will start with Rodolfo Cavicchioli, product manager of Luve Group. He will talk to us about heat exchangers for flammable refrigerants, conformity of the product. He will be followed by Carmelo Di Pasquale, product manager for Nippon Gases, who will explain low GWP refrigerants for energy efficiency in commercial refrigeration. Now, uh, I don't take any more of your time. It is my pleasure and honor to give the word to Marco Buoni, CEO of Centro Studi Galileo and former area president. Thank you very much for joining and for your attention. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody, and thank you, Carmelo. Welcome, Rodolfo. Uh, Lipo Gases and Lube are always very good partner of Centro Studi Galileo. Thank you to Silvia and to my colleague for organizing this uh, webinar. I will take a uh, you know, few minutes of your time to give this introduction um, to the webinar, speaking why it is so important to speak about efficient and safe system using a 2 refrigerants, and uh, some kind of inter uh, review of international, um, international uh, now uh, scenario. Uh, panorama because there are a lot of changes in our sectors and I would like to um, focus a bit on that. So um, uh, I'm uh, uh, the Secretary General of ATF, Italian Association of Refrigeration, and uh, former president of AREA. AREA is the European Association of Refrigeration and Conditioning um, Technicians. Uh, we present uh, 26 associations from 22 countries, not only in Europe, but also uh, Norway, Turkey, and uh, other countries that are linked to us, uh, thanks to MOUs that we had. Centro Studi Galileo is a training center. Uh, we do uh, training in, uh, in uh, refrigeration and condition heat pumps, not just uh, in Italy, but worldwide. We do nearly 50 training uh, sessions every year. Uh, worldwide and 300 training centers in Italy. We did since uh, 2012 10,000 certifications for F gases. So I'll give you some examples. We cooperate with United Nations, UNEP, UNED, UNDP, and the European Commission um, and the many other European international associations. Uh, I told you we do a lot of training abroad. Recently, we've been to uh, Madagascar. Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Egypt, um, and uh, more, mm, more training around the globe. Uh, in Africa, Asia, South Asia, uh, South America, etc. We organize every year, every two years, a big conference, which is the European Conference. Uh, last was in June, and 350, uh, 250 persons participated from 43 countries. This year, we will have an event in Mostra Convegno, Mostra Convegno Expo Comfort in, uh, in Milano. Also, we have a, a magazine, which is uh, the magazine Industria Formazione, International Special Issue, which is a magazine uh, edited with the United Nations, in which uh, we speak about the latest technology of refrigeration and air conditioning. And it is a divulgative uh, publication to give to uh, member states, uh, governments, uh, head of states in uh, several conferences of the United Nations. For example, the Climate Change Conference that was in Glasgow last year, or the Montreal Potter Conference, which will be uh, probably in Nairobi uh, this year, uh, and will be, uh, the OEWG will be in Bangkok. A few words about the gas regulation review. 
It's a very hot topic, very hot, important topic. Uh, ARIA is very involved. Our association is very involved. We were last week, the 13th of May, in uh, Athens, all the ARA family, all the 25 to 26 associations of ARA, we were there. And we will come out with a strong and important position paper about the gas regulation. What is going to be the future of uh, fermented gases in our sector? We're going to phase down for sure F gases. We're going to move to alternative refrigerants. We're going to move to flammable refrigerants, A2L. Well, a free refrigerant. So it's very important when we talk about it. And we were going to talk about it for a long time, I think, at least for two years for the discussion. And then for 10 years, probably, for the implementation. So last year, I wanted to tell you, I highlight you, that the European Commission came out with a um, statement, a position paper, a report on split air conditioning which is possible to use in air conditioning uh, hydrocarbons. Um, this is very topic because uh, in low refrigerant, in low split air conditioning, below seven kilos, this was uh, highlighted. At the moment, only in UK, Greece and Germany are sold uh, this kind of uh, systems. Uh, in larger systems, the uh, European Commission want to move to uh, lower European refrigerant to phase uh, down for 10A and go to R32. This is what I tell you because it's something is in the proposal and you will see in a few moments how it is in the proposal. The proposal is done, has been just issued one month ago, 5th of April. We got uh, the uh, proposal in all languages. You can find all languages translated the uh, revision in Italian, in Czech, in uh, Polish, uh, in French, German, etc. in uh, the European uh, Commission link. And um, you find uh, this regulation proposal, which is going to, uh, is in the consultation uh, period now. Uh, till the 29 of uh, uh, June. So send you uh, send your comments to European uh, Commission. These comments will be taken and passed to the legislative procedure, to the European Parliament and European Council. The European Parliament, the European Council, due to political uh, overview, uh, political uh, dialogue, will vote for it. And we will see the uh, happening of this uh, the adoption late 2023, probably 1st of January 2024, it will be in all member states in place. Because as you probably know, a regulation is automatically adopted in all member countries as soon as it comes to official journal of the European Union. So what is the main points of this proposal? It's important for you to know training and certification for alternative refrigerant for all kinds of HFOs, training and certification, and training, we are, we are working on making also certification for natural refrigerants. At the moment, training is mandatory in this proposal for natural refrigerants. We are going to move and push to have also uh, the natural refrigerants certification. Because certification is well working in Europe, is an example globally worldwide. So it's very easy to just top up, top, put on top of a gas regulation, a certification of gas certification, a certification about natural refrigerants, about hydrocarbons, CO2, ammonia, natural refrigerants in the specific uh, differences of this refrigerant, in particular for the safety side about uh, flammability, about uh, toxicity in ammonia, and about high pressure in CO2. And um, also, uh, we want the provisions, uh, leak checks, uh, we want, uh, uh, as area, we want the leak checks, uh, the periodic inspections, uh, we want uh, all the uh, logbooks, um, maybe a database, uh, well, there is a good working database in few countries, for example, in Estonia, in Poland, in Italy, there's an online database collecting all the data 
or doing a census of all the systems that are, that are available in uh, Europe. So it would be nice to have the same census, the same logbook, the same uh, leak check for all kinds of refrigerant, uh, all kinds of uh, refrigeration system, uh, accreditation system, to make it consistent. Our technicians are working well, well applied, well taken by technicians. So it's easy and good working, a system with no leaks. No leaks of CO2, no leaks of hydrocarbons, no leaks of ammonia. So this is what we want. Um, what is the proposal? The proposal is also Article 17, which is very important, that the self-contained air conditioning pump system should contain GWP minor of 150. So from 1st of January 2025 is tomorrow. Is tomorrow that we are going to have uh, self-contained. What, what means self-contained? Self-contained is in EN378 and means uh, a system, so also two systems, but contained in the same um, container, in the same uh, block. Um, so we can say that uh, it's also maybe two different systems connected each other, but they have their ship, their transport, they are always united and they are never split. Why the split on the Article 18 and will come into force in 1st January 2027, um, that says stationary split air conditioning equipment uh, rated below 12 kilos. You probably remember the report was only below 7 kilos, but now is up to 12 kilos. They want to work below GOP 150. And above 12 kilowatts, and 12 kilowatts probably is for it pumps is a thermal uh, load, of course, the thermal capacity. Sorry, um, and probably for it pumps in that case will be lower the cooling capacity, maybe around 10 kilowatts. But this just to say that above 12 kilowatts, 750 GWP. So it means uh, again a fortune uh, phase the phase down, phase out of. And I would say banned in the systems and included a lower GOP region, which could be R32, for example. I'm not saying that it is, but it could be. What is GOP below 150? At the moment, there are very few GOP 150 uh, A12s, but will be in the futures. And for air conditioning as well, we are looking forward to have a GOP region with GOP below 150. For refrigeration, there are, as you will see in this uh, webinar. In this webinar, you will see a very good example of uh, a 12 refrigerants with very low GWP, which are available for refrigeration. Also, in the uh, proposal, you will see accelerated phase down. Very accelerated. You can see in this cylinder that we're going to have uh, uh, around 5% in 2030. Uh, instead of the beginning, the proposed the, the F gas regulation that is in place now is 21%. Uh, uh, now we want to, in the same period to have 5% only of uh, fluoridated gases, in, uh, uh, counted in CO2 tons equivalent, of course. So, all what I said to you means we need really good training. We need to have more capacity, more uh, capacity building, awareness. Uh, at the moment in Europe, we have half a million technicians certified. We have to retrain these technicians. And the deadline is very close, 2025, 2027. Split system means, means that we, are ready, we still need to, to connect this system. So we need trained personnel. Um, and we did a good job at the end. At the moment, we have less lax, uh, more controlling systems, more competence, better equipped um, uh, companies, uh, and also for hydrocarbons, for example, uh, at the moment there are no uh, enough recovery machine, only two brands that I'm aware of, and also split system with hydrocarbon, only three brands. So we need to move fast, and uh, the first short and middle term are for sure the A2L. Let's see what will be the long term, of course. But for sure, we need now training and certification, for sure. 
And for this reason, we have the real alternatives for all kinds of refrigerants, which is certification, uh, voluntary in uh, um, quite uh, uh, all the country of Europe. Uh, and it is voluntary only in Spain at the moment, but it's going to be also in Estonia and other countries in Europe. We would like this project, which is well working. We already certified 2000 technicians, is uh, applied, uh, is, uh, uh, has been used in 27 countries. Um, globally, not just in Europe, and uh, we have 20, uh, 30 training centers using and delivering and issuing this kind of training and certification, which is on top of a gas training certification, as I said to you. One last thing, when I, when I leave to my colleagues, which are doing, uh, will do a great job in introducing you the A2L and why they are so important for our sector, uh, I'd like to show you that we are going to have uh, um, Saturday afternoon, a webinar about alternative refrigerant for Africa. So we can say alternative refrigerants for Africa, like, um, uh, you know, a global uh, webinar, a global training. And you can see here the, um, the, the program. And also Marino Bassi will be there participating uh, for uh, group practice from refrigerants. And Kivan Lantas from uh, Turkey will be there to speak about good practice for carbon dioxide. And also Jose Maria Manuel Ribeiro from uh, Portugal, from Nigeria, Ade Abujola, and the president, Marisa Cante, which is uh, also one of our best teachers in Centro Studi Galeo, which goes around the globe to do training, uh, and president of the UFRIARC Association, will introduce like myself. So thank you very much. I thank always our sponsor that helps us to have this kind of webinar to give, uh, to increase the competence, to increase the knowledge, to increase the awareness. All three things are very important. And then pass to the first speaker. The first speaker of today, our good friend, uh, which are um, now uh, well known to our audience because uh, come quite uh, often to our training uh, and webinars, giving a very good job, explaining very well the heat exchangers for flammable refrigerants, conformity of the product. Important topic. Thank you, Rodolfo from Louvre, product manager. Thank you, Rodolfo, for being thank here. You, thank you, Marco, for the brief introduction. And thanks you all for being here and welcome to my presentation. So I will uh, share my presentation. So let me know if you can see my slides. Yes, we can see your slide. Okay, perfect. So uh, yeah, in this uh, let's say very short 15 minute long presentation, I will go through this uh, uh, interesting um, uh, uh, topic that is, uh, let me see. I should have uh, the title of the presentation somewhere. I don't know why I cannot see the title, but yeah, we will go through the, okay. I just uh, hide the slide, I don't know why. But yeah, we will see a heat exchanger for flammable refrigerants uh, and uh, uh, the process that have brought Luve to um, being able to um, certify the um, heat exchangers especially the um, commercial unit coolers uh, for the use of flammable refrigerant, in particular for the use of uh, A2L refrigerants uh, and for a specific range for uh, propane. So uh, what is the conformity of the product and how that um, conformity has been achieved? Um, so recently, Luve has developed a complete range of commercial unit coolers uh, specifically designed for the um, flammable refrigerants uh, a12 flammable refrigerants uh, and for uh, R290, that is propane, in fact. So uh, when it comes to Luve, uh, that I forgot to mention, Luve is uh, for um, um, people that are not aware of what Luve is. Uh, Luve is a multinational manufacturer of air heat exchangers. Um, so we produce evaporators, condensers, fluid coolers. Uh, and uh, yeah, when it comes to commercial refrigeration, uh, we have seen this. Uh, steep increase in the use of uh, flammable refrigerants given the limits that the uh, uh, F-gas regulation in Europe, uh, Kigali amendments uh, uh, in uh, the rest of the world have imposed to the market. So Lugas has uh, said, introduced uh, in the market this um, um, specific range uh, designed for uh, uh, a safe use with uh, flammable refrigerants. And uh, 
uh, we will see how this uh, um, range has been uh, say, certified uh, for the use of these refrigerants. Because this is a complex uh, uh, argument, meaning that uh, as for today, for this kind of products, uh, so specifically Erit Exchanger, an harmonized standard to refer to for product compliance that does not exist. We have uh, the EN 378 that is harmonized for the machinery directive, but uh, by itself, uh, this standard is not sufficient in case of use of flammable refrigerants. Then we have the EEC 6335-2-40, which offers um, solutions and uh, procedures for compliance, but this has not been recognized and accepted yet at the level of technical committees. So what Luba has decided to, to do is to uh, commission uh, to Fitali uh, to carry out an evaluation of the technical choices that have been adopted by Luve in the development of this range of unit coolers with the aim of reaching a final product conformity uh, and, uh, and so to have the possibility to mark the product with the C stamp for the use of this uh, flammable refrigerants. So given the absence of an harmonized standard to refer to for compliance, and following the analysis of all the risk arising from the use of flammable refrigerants, um, Luve has chosen to seek conformity by verifying the requirements of the product directive or the harmonized standards were available, and then has submitted the technical solution adopted for compliance to TUF, this third party, um, this third party player that has um, uh, uh, assessed the, the correctness of Luve choices by expressing a technical opinion in order to consider the fulfillment, to, uh, to confirm the fulfillment of the health and safety requirements of the machinery directive. First of all, uh, the, the, the uh, requirements that have been taken into consideration um, were the RESS, essential requirements for safety and health. Specifically, those regarding fire hazard and explosion hazard. So when it comes to the fire hazard, uh, this um, uh, minimal requirement basically states that uh, the machine must be designed and built in such a way as to avoid any risk of fire or overheating caused, caused by the machine itself or by any gas, uh, liquid, powder, vapor, or any other substance that is produced or used by the machine. And a similar, <clears throat> a similar thing uh, is uh, when it comes to the explosion risk. So the machine in this case uh, must be designed and built uh, to avoid uh, the risk, uh, any risk of explosion, caused in, uh, also in this case by the machine itself uh, or um, uh, any substance produced or used by the machine. In addition to that, the machine must comply with the specific community directives with regards to the explosion risk uh, caused by the use in a potentially explosive atmosphere. So these two um, uh, minimal requirements have been uh, analyzed and uh, all the risk uh, related to the use of these refrigerants in uh, our uh, um, uh, air exchangers have been analyzed. And uh, the description of this risk are um, as below. Um, so when operating with flammable refrigerants, any point of discontinuity in the circuit um, can represent an emission source that, is, uh, the, that are determined and identified by an international standard that is the 60079-10-1. And uh, basically um, uh, evaluate uh, this emission source into two, um, into two levels. So there are the second degree emission sources that uh, uh, exist in case of uh, uh, the emission is caused by a fault. For example, a leak from a fitting or a seal of a, uh, or a fixed type joint. Or uh, the second, um, the second uh, um, emission source uh, type can be of the first degree, meaning that uh, the emission depends on the deterioration of a non-fixed type seal. 
So um, for the Louvre range of evaporators or heat exchangers in general, but for the specific uh, range of unit coolers specifically, uh, in the absence of valves or any other possible first degree source emission, the emissions are of the second degree. So in this case, the risk of explosion or fire, depending on the use of flammable refrigerant in this uh, um, heat exchangers is due to the combination of uh, the flammable uh, atmosphere that can be created um, around the heat exchanger and the probability that the ignition sources that are present in the product or around the product that in case of the product itself are represented by electrical components such as electrical motors and electrical heaters can become active and thus trigger the explosion. So what are the aspects considered for compliance uh, that Louvre has uh, considered for compliance? Louvre has uh, analyzed the risk uh, and tested the, the possibility to, um, to have any leaks in case of any possible problem, analyzed the uh, atmosphere around the exchanger and the risk of uh, uh, that atmosphere becoming uh, fire hazard in combination with the electrical components that are part of the heat exchanger. So uh, the process to make the unit compliance with the use of flammable refrigerants have uh, gone through this redesign of the piping of the heat exchanger in order to uh, consider, in order to use only welded or braced connections without any uh, uh, Schrader pressure valve into the circuit. So our standard design for the commercial uh, heat exchangers, uh, unit coolers is with a uh, Schrader pressure valve on the um, um, outer outlet uh, header. In this uh, case, um, for this uh, range of uh, um, unit coolers, there is no Schrader pressure valve on the, on the outer header. Then uh, we have performed uh, the, some tightness test uh, during which uh, it is, was concluded that uh, the presence of gas uh, and flammable uh, refrigerant gas uh, is possible. So for example, in case of not perfect weldings uh, that, are, uh, that can become possible leaks uh, sources. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a scenario that is not, uh, let's say, um, that is not something that is uh, uh, intended as common, but it's uh, something that is possible. So for this case, uh, for this uh, the risk of having around the heat exchanger uh, a possible um, um, flammable atmosphere, uh, we uh, as a manufacturer, we had to uh, reconsider some of our electrical components uh, or at least analyze the risk of uh, our electrical components uh, becoming um, uh, possible ignition sources uh, in the of that uh, flammable atmosphere. So, what we have done, we have done this verification of our electrical components, uh, the main components that uh, are a part of the um, commercial unit coolers. So, the first and most important were the fan motors. So, what we have done as to decide to adopt uh, ATEX uh, electronic fan motors uh, suitable for zone two, or in case of not uh, uh, availability on the market of uh, ATEX fan motors uh, for, uh, this, um, uh, for the sizes that we are currently using in our um, unit coolers, commercial unit coolers, uh, what we have done was to uh, um, use our standard electronic fan motors uh, after testing. Uh, uh, in a third party laboratory to verify the absence of sparks uh, or other possible ignition sources uh, um, for these uh, fan motors. All our EC fan motors have been, uh, let's say, approved for the use, uh, safe to use of flammable refrigerants. So we are, uh, uh, we have this range that is split among uh, where available uh, ATEX uh, um, fan motors uh, and were not available just our standard EC fan motors that have been tested and approved for the use of uh, flammable refrigerants. Then we have tested the electrical heaters. So for all these uh, units that are electrical defrosted, we had to verify that the 
uh, standard electrical heaters that we have been using since uh, a standard in our design was uh, stay safe for the use of uh, um, flammable refrigerants. So uh, now we use for this specific range armored electrical heaters with a maximum operating temperature of 700 C. There uh, is the, let's say, surface temperature, maximum surface temperature that is uh, a requirement by the um, international standard 60-0335-2-40. And when it comes to uh, the specific range of unit coolers uh, designed for R290, so propane, that is a H3 refrigerant, so much uh, less uh, flammable refrigerant uh, than the uh, H2L refrigerants. Uh, we had to uh, use uh, less powerful heaters in order not to exceed the, the 370 C. That is the, the limit of the auto ignition. Uh, that is 100 degrees after the auto ignition temperature of propane. Uh, then uh, the last thing we verified with the electrical junction boxes, uh, we are placing the junction boxes on the opposite sides of the weldings. So where we have the bands of the tubes and not the connection with the uh, distributor. And for this reason, we kind of uh, limit the risk of uh, having an um, mm, flammable atmosphere around the uh, electrical junction box. And uh, this uh, was um, uh, enough to make the um, heat exchanger safe for the use of this, uh, uh, this refrigerant. Then uh, the other thing that we have uh, approached and then done was the, the change to the machine labeling and to the operating and installation manuals for this specific range. So when it comes to labeling, we had updated this fire hazard indication on our units uh, to make it uh, clear and uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, bell ring when, um, when an installer is operating on the unit. Then uh, when it comes to installation and operating manual, we are adding a prescription in order to limit the risks. The risks. For example, we have introduced a, a list of uh, um, tips on how to store, transport, handle, install the product, and the uh, notes about the attention needed during the maintenance phase. Uh, for a 2 l refrigerants, uh, in case of electric defrost, uh, we have added this prescription to use only the refrigerants, the H2L refrigerants that are listed on the international standard 60335-2-40 on the Annex B. The reason for this is that uh, uh, in this list, this is the, the international standard that Luve has decided to use in order to uh, decide on how to proceed with the technical uh, choices uh, to have a product that is safe. So uh, all these uh, um, refrigerants that are stated in this international standard have been verified. Um, there is this list of refrigerants in this Annex B of this international standard with a list of uh, the information on what the maximum uh, um, surface temperature is in order to operate safely and all these other uh, characteristics. With all the other refrigerants that are not currently listed in this international standard, we cannot see that we can operate just because uh, uh, we have used that as a standard uh, to um, develop our design. So um, it's just a matter of, uh, given the fact that we have used that as a standard, we are only considering those refrigerants as uh, okay and safe for the use in our units. So just to conclude, just a sum up of what we have seen, uh, Luve Group has recently launched a complete range of commercial unit coolers for flammable refrigerants, both uh, for A to L refrigerants, so this uh, um, ASHRAE classified as slightly flammable refrigerants, and uh, uh, not a complete range, but just a, let's say uh, a, a smaller range of uh, commercial unit coolers for the use of propane, so an A3 refrigerant. So a very flammable refrigerant, not a slightly flammable refrigerant. Uh, but uh, um, when launching the, uh, the product to the market, uh, we wanted to be compliant and safe for the use of uh, this refrigerant. We wanted to guarantee our customers a safe product that was indeed certified for the use of these refrigerants. But we have uh, 
that they we had to face the problem that there was a, uh, not an harmonized standard to refer to for the compliance. So the decision of Luve was to obtain the compliance by verifying the requirements of the applicable product directives and then submitted the, the technical solution adopted to a third party uh, um, independent third party laboratory for a verification of the safety um, safety points. We have considered the following aspects for compliance. And what, so only the use of permanent connections, brace connections, the tightness test for brace connections uh, to uh, verify that uh, all electrical components are not in fact uh, possible sources of uh, ignition in the air that it was at risk of uh, refrigerant leaks. So we have verified fan motors, electrical heaters, and electrical junction boxes. And then we have work on the labeling and manuals. So after all this analysis, uh, after all this uh, uh, say technical uh, um, uh, decision on how to approach this, uh, this, um, this development of this uh, range of units, to Italy has assessed that the solution adopted by Luve are adequate for the safety requirements relating to fire and explosion. So we are currently the only air, um, air heat exchanger manufacturer that have in fact run through this certification, let's say self-assessment, uh, risk assessment, self-assessed risk assessment, and have a, a third party certification when it comes to safety for uh, in um, in the use of uh, safe in the use of um, uh, A2L refrigerants. So with this, uh, I have completed my presentation. I'm open to any question or uh, or anything. Thank you very much for the for the presentation. It was Thank very you. interesting, and in fact, it arose much interest. We have a lot of questions. Okay. So uh, let me start with. Uh, so here, I hope I pronounced the names correctly, so please bear with me. Um, the questions are, well, first, um, the, there is a comment. So I believe you are talking about evaporators for direct expansion. I don't know if you want to comment on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, we are we are working about, we, are, mm, we have worked especially for uh, unit coolers, so evaporators for direct expansions. Yeah. Okay. And then right. there is, there are, Two questions uh, again by Suyer. So, mm -hmm. what is the maximum capacity of your evaporators with R290? Um, so, uh, of course, it depends on um, it depends on, uh, on uh, uh, working condition. But when it comes to uh, um, when it comes to this specific range that is designed to work safely with R290, we have this uh, four fan. Uh, low um, profile uh, um, unit cooler. So let's consider uh, 10 to 15 kilowatts. That is uh, more or less the, the capacity we can work with. We can have slightly higher capacity, but uh, I will say that the 10, 15 is uh, uh, the maximum we have uh, been asked for because we have seen uh, the requirements. That we, have been, we have seen requests for uh, usually smaller capacities when mm -hmm. it comes to R290. But uh, yeah, our range is uh, in, in, the, in the range up to uh, okay. 15, 20 kilowatts. Okay. Yeah. And the last question by Zuhir is, what about R1270? So I'm not that familiar with this uh, specific refrigerant. I don't know if that's uh, an A2L refrigerant. Mm or no, I can verify that. Yeah, we can come back to that on the- Okay, day. absolutely. So just okay. consider this, uh, when it comes to the use of these refrigerants in uh, Luve evaporators certified for the use of a 12 refrigerants, we have no limits uh, when it comes to air defrost unit coolers, uh, meaning that we can work with whatever refrigerant. When we work with uh, electrical defrost uh, unit coolers, uh, we have this, uh, uh, let's say, Given the fact that the tower um, assessment has been done considering the international standard 660-335-2-40, we uh, they can only state that we are uh, certified for the use of the refrigerants that are listed on the annex okay. B on that specific international standard. This doesn't mean that uh, 
we cannot work safely with that refrigeration. And this only means that uh, the certification is limited to that list uh, just because that's what we have used for our process, certification process. If uh, this refrigerant will be uh, in the future will be added, I don't know if it is a, if it already is in that uh, list. But if not, if that will be added in that list, uh, we will be certified for the use of that refrigerant uh, as well. So, okay. So we hope are... I have been clear. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I would uh, ask another question. Then I think we have to pass to the other speaker, and then I can share them with you via email. The other questions. Absolutely. Guillaume is asking AC, sorry, IC motor fan are approved also for R290 or only for A12 refrigerants? Uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to R290, we have to use uh, ATEX. Uh, or it's not uh, it's a what we are using is a slightly ATEX uh, um, EC fan motor, mm -hmm. and uh, that has been uh, they tested and verified and confirmed uh, to be safe with the use of propane. That's uh, not the, our standard electronic fan motor. There is a, let's say, a not complete ATEX fan motor. It's just an ATEX for, let's say, slightly ATEX, meaning that it is the ATEX for the uh, one of the least uh, demanding uh, ATEX conditions. But that's, uh, that have been tested and confirmed for the use of propane. Yeah. Have, the the bigger also... thing that we had to run uh, through when it came to the development of uh, this uh, range for uh, propane unit coolers were the electrical heaters because, yeah, we had to work a lot on uh, rising, increasing the number of elements and reducing their temperature because, yeah, that could generate, that could have generated in the standard configuration, uh, that could have been possible source of um, ignition the surface temperature of the, these elements. So yeah, that was- We the... have also a question on surface temperature, but it looks quite long to explain. So I will either do it later or via okay. email. But there is this one, which is quite short. I don't know if it's, um, I think so it's short. Uh, the person did not sign the name. So how is Luva managing the lack of brushless fan EC type stock in the supply chain? Yeah, so that is a, that is a very big uh, question. That is a very interesting question. So yeah, we are um, uh, struggling as uh, all the manufacturers are currently with uh, the lack of uh, um, EC fan motors uh, in the market. Of course, uh, we have some, let's say, big stock. We have some fan diameters and fan, fan sizes that are available. Some others that are quite uh, difficult to find. Um, so uh, let's say it's something that we are addressing, that we are uh, say, trying to face uh, the proper way, uh, building up a stock and guaranteeing our customers the shorter lead time possible. But of course, in this specific moment, it is a very big uh, limit to our business. So yeah. So this is not uh, exactly uh, completely not related short. to the yeah. Yeah, to the to the presentation. This is a problem curiosity. that is uh, yeah, a curiosity. Yeah. But yeah, this is a very big thing. I see from the comments that they are saying it is a propylene gas, so A3, classified as A3. Okay. So yeah, uh, in that in that specific case, we need to run uh, some tests uh, the same way we have done with uh, propane. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Rodolfo thank you all for, for your, your time and for your presentation. So I will uh, now ask uh, Carmelo to turn on the webcam and share the screen for the next presentation. Thank you very much, and thanks everybody for the questions. Please feel free to keep asking them and also using the Q and A box. Thank you. Can you hear me, Silvia? Yes. Okay. Oh, so you can, you may want to share your screen. Yes, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, it's coming. Okay, I see your desktop. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, good morning to everyone. I'm Carmelo Di Pasquale, product manager for Nippon Gas Refrigerant. And today we are talking about an um, uh, interesting topic, a very important topic, low refrigerant for energy efficiency in commercial refrigeration. Um, just a brief introduction of, uh, of, my, of our company, Nippon Gas Italy is uh, one of the leading companies 
in the industrial gas sector and is a member of uh, Nippon Gas Europe that is part of Nippon Sanso Holding Corporation. We are uh, the leading companies in the production distribution of uh, medical, refrigerant, uh, refrigerant, cryogenic, technical and special gases. And, this, uh, and beside our uh, its, uh, core product, we also supply materials, equipment, and we have uh, a lot of plant of gas. As uh, you can see, we are present in uh, all over the world and uh, in all Europe. And um, we are among the, the, the biggest producer of uh, CO2 for any application in, uh, in Italy, uh, in Italy, inside Italy. Um, for um, what concern uh, uh, Nippon Gas Refrigerant is a business unit of Nippon Gas Italy. We are, uh, the main, uh, we are among the main distributors in Italy of uh, refrigerant gases. And uh, thanks to our extensive and widespread commercial network, we are able to operate quickly and uh, efficiently throughout the Italian territory, proposing a full range of, uh, of products and solutions in partnership with our main suppliers, that are Chemus, Honeywell, Daikin, and Arkema. As you can see in uh, in, uh, in this uh, in this photo, we are present in all uh, in all Italy um, throughout our filling station. Uh, for example, as you can see uh, uh, down in the left, uh, there is the, our primary filling station in uh, in Alessandria. Uh, we have uh, a lot of warehouse, uh, sale office, main office, and uh, refrigerant reseller. Um, um, if you can, if we want to get in closer, in uh, um, before to getting closer to our main uh, main topic, and um, the, the the target of uh, the European market of uh, F gas is uh, regulated by F gas regulation. That is the target to uh, to restrict the emission of HFC uh, by seventy one nine percent and by two thousand thirty. And let's have a look about uh, the, the, uh, what F-Gas say in commercial, in commercial refrigeration. Um, since uh, uh, 1st January of 2020, we have a ban on the use of GWP uh, with HFC with GWP higher than 2,500. But uh, for the 1st January of 2022, um, we have the ban on, on the use of the HFC with GWP higher than 150, so it's more strict right now. The, the legislation, but for that plant that have cap capacity higher than 40 kilowatts. So, for example, for central system in uh, that uh, uses that uses uh, primary circuit or cascade or refrigerant system, in which it will still possible use F gas with GWP less than 1,500. So, for example, one uh, one uh, one R one three four AA and uh, for primary system and CO two for second stage. What, uh, what about uh, um, uh, industrial refrigeration? Here, the, the limit is uh, um, uh, the ban is on the use of HFC, which they will be higher than 2,500. Um, so here, it will still be possible to use air 448 and air 449 and air 452J. In, uh, in this type of, uh, of plant. Uh, so this is the situation in the, in the new system, uh, in the new plants. And what about uh, 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 existing plants? So what are the limitations of using maintenance? For what concerns maintenance here, the, uh, we have the, the, the ban on the use of HFC with GWP higher than 2,500 for, uh, for maintenance in uh, over refrigeration system which charge higher than 40 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Uh, so for example, uh, air 4048 has a GWP approximately 4,000 of, of value. So uh, uh, that means that we cannot uh, use uh, uh, R404A Virgin for that system that has a charge higher than 10.2 kilos. Except uh, for the system that are designed for cooling products at temperature minus, uh, less than minus 15 degrees for military uses and until 2030 for regenerated and recycled HFC. Um, for that system that has uh, um, a charge higher than uh, uh, 10.2 kilos, we can uh, we can use only air 404 a refined. And these are uh, this is very uh, important because uh, uh, regeneration recovery could help to um, uh, to reach uh, the, the target of, of uh, efficacy regulation uh, by 2030. 
Um, before we getting closer to the main topic, I would like to show here uh, what um, what is the um, ideal properties that uh, a refrigerant gas must have inside the circuit. A uh, refrigerant gas should uh, should have the following properties: so high critical temperature, uh, low boiling point, high volumetric density, high latent heat of vaporization, and must be not flammable and explosive and explosive. And this is a um, uh, we have so we have to, to do a, um, a, a consideration about the flammability of the gas. In fact, for this reason, the international standard classify gas gases into three flammability classes: uh, A1 uh, not flammable gases, A2 hell, uh, as we we'll also say before, uh, mid, uh, midly flammable refrigerant gases, and A3 flammable gases such as propane. So what are the main parameters uh, that uh, we need for the classification of, flamma of the flammability of, of, of the gas, of the refrigerant gas? We have four main parameters. Uh, lower and upper flammability limits that uh, represent the minimum charge that, uh, um, uh, that the refrigerant must, uh, that a circuit must have to, um, to trigger an explosion. The initial energy, the flame propagation speed, for example, propane that is a, flam a flammable refrigerant, has a flame propagation speed 30 times higher than H2L uh, middle flammable refrigerant gases and heat of combustion. Uh, going forward, uh, here is um, uh, so uh, where the market is uh, is going. We are we are assisted at uh, the transition to lower GWP refrigerant, and this is. Uh, is an overview of what is uh, currently happening inside the market. So uh, while the, um, we, have, we have to find a, a solution uh, of, uh, for example, retrofit gas for uh, a drop in of R404A or R4507A that uh, are banned in the new system, but while the replacement of uh, R404A in industrial plants and retrofit can be uh, carried out with, minim, with medium GWP gases such as R448, R449, R452A, in commercial refrigeration, uh, as there are not a one not flammable refrigerant, which is low GWP and suitable for low temperature, with an H2L refrigerant must be used at all natural gases. For this reason, um, I would like to introduce uh, this new uh, refrigerant that uh, um, we can use inside the new plants according to the gas regulation that uh, are developed by Honeywell and Camus, that are uh, uh, our partners. And um, uh, the, two, uh, the, the two refrigerants are R455A and also called the Sources L4TX like commercial brand and R454C of Camus, also called Opton XL20. They have both uh, uh, GWP less than 150 and um, uh, we can uh, we can use this uh, uh, this type of gas for uh, uh, the, the, uh, for to reach the, uh, the decarbonization, decarbonization goals of the European Green Deal. So this is uh, um, an overview of what is happening inside the refrigerant market in uh, in Italy and in Europe. Uh, going forward, we can see a comparison. We can do a comparison between the, um, the two, uh, two refrigerants. Uh, they are very similar. They, they are both uh, zeotropic blend with, with, um, with the difference that uh, Solsys LF4TX has a little bit of percentage in the blend, 3% approximately, that um, allow him to, to reach better performance at low temperature be, uh, than uh, XL20. Uh, but uh, uh, on the other hand, the temperature glide of XL20 is less than the Solsys LF4TX. Uh, in terms of lower flammable, flammable limits, uh, as I can say before, as I say before, um, um, the higher is the lower flammable limit, the less is uh, the, the limit charge. So we can see that uh, um, sources L4 has a um, has a lower flammable limit, a little bit higher than XL20. So we can reach uh, uh, a higher limit charge with the uh, with the R455A. Where we can find this uh, this uh, this uh, these new gases, uh, of course, in uh, in self-contained system or also called plug-in and in contents unit with hermetic compression. Even if, uh, according to the uh, IEC uh, 60335, of, uh, as discussed before from uh, Rodolfo, uh, here um, with the new uh, revision of uh, of F-gas, maybe it will bring the limit charge at 500 uh, grams for circuit for propane. 
Uh, but we can see uh, without problem uh, this, uh, this type of, uh, of gas inside the central system and condensed unit and in multiple track system when uh, the capacity become higher. Um, uh, here, just uh, um, I would like to show a comparison in terms of uh, uh, cap uh, capacity and, uh, and COP of, uh, of, the, of, of the refrigerant uh, respect to the R404A. We can see that both we have uh, a better COP of A12 refrigerant than R404A. That means that we can reach uh, energy saving. That is the most important uh, things. And um, uh, for what concerns sources cell for ticks, we can reach a higher capacity uh, from from two percent to six percent, approximately than the hope cell twenty. And on the other side, optonic cell twenty, we can reach. Uh, from seven to ten uh, higher CP than air for five five a. This is the situation in medium temperature. Um, if you want to analyze also the condition uh, in uh, the, the, the performance at low temperature, we can see that uh, uh, the trend is very similar. Uh, better CP of A12 uh, refrigerant than air for zero four a. And source cell for ticks here we can see a little bit higher capacity at optimum cell twenty. But on the other hand, optimum cell 20 can, can reach up to 15 higher COP than source cell 40 So the two refrigerants uh, are very similar uh, in terms of, uh, of performance. Um, here we are, um, we can um, analyze a very important topic. So um, when we have to do a correct, a correct environmental assessment, we don't only consider it only the, the direct emission of the, of the gas into, into the environment. But we also uh, consider it the indirect emission from the, the energy production process. So, what is the main factor that take in consideration also indirect emission and not only um, uh, direct emission, such as uh, the well known GWP? Is also called, is, is called TEWI, Total Equivalent Warming Impact, that take in, into account uh, the, the global warming impact from both direct and direct emission, and is calculated as a sum of both. So, direct effect of uh, the refrigerant releasing during the lifetime, and also the, um, uh, the operating uh, uh, emission throughout the, the life cycle of, of the plant. Uh, so um, we have to do, we have to underline this uh, important factor because uh, it's, it's very important when we have to show, to choose uh, um, the correct uh, refrigerant plant. Here, yeah, I would like to show um, a simulation uh, of, uh, of the total emission that we can reach inside the, the, a retail application in a large scale retail trade. And we can see that if we analyze all the type of uh, technology, for example, uh, the new refrigerant with GWP lower than 150 and the CO2 transcritical system, uh, uh, propane with glycol cascade. So we, here we have a overview of the, of, uh, uh, of the total um, type of plants. We can see that uh, direct uh, emission have a very low incidence for low GWP refrigerant. And among the refrigerant with GWP less than 150, uh, R40, R4, 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 C optic cell 20 is characterized by the lowest emission over 20 years of life plant. So um, that, that means that indirect emission must take consider for the right choice of the plant, as I said before. Um, uh, and now we can, uh, we can say that in large scale retail trade, uh, we have to do a, show, a choice between uh, carbon dioxide uh, system uh, with the transcritical, uh, also opsocritical cascade system uh, and, HFO, and HFO low GWP refrigerant. So we can say that uh, mm, uh, an established trend, especially in Northern Europe, uh, is the use of CO2 with the, um, with the consideration that uh, with, the, with the use of transcritical and subcritical cascade system. But if we, if we, if we pay particular attention, um, we can say that if we go to the Southern Europe, uh, transcritical system have uh, some, uh, some difficult, some problem in condensation difficult because uh, um, due to the, um, to the low critical temperature that uh, CO2 has. And uh, as we see before, an ideal refrigerant must have uh, the higher critical temperature. So uh, that means that we can have a lot of uh, uh, energy cost for the compressor gas to high pressure, uh, operative cost, and also uh, a more leakage rate than 
A2L refrigerant, syntax refrigerant. So that means that uh, CO2 is not always the best solution. We have to uh, analyze case to case. And we can say that uh, uh, CO2 is, uh, is a good choice only for that uh, supermarket or retail chain that uh, uh, the surface is higher than 2,000 square meters. Um, uh, for that, uh, uh, for that uh, um, uh, retail point that goes from 300, for example, to 2,000 square meters, um, uh, that this new refrigerant, as I said before, air 455A developed by Honeywell and air 454C developed by Camus, are the right choice for this for this type of application. This is very important because uh, uh, we don't have um, we don't have to analyze only the, the direct emission, but also the indirect emission throughout the life cycle of the plants. Uh, here is a um, is a comparison in term. Uh, in, in, uh, here we can analyze the performance of the of the various typology of plants. I said before, for a, for example, for an application of a supermarket of. Uh, by a surface of 2,000 square meters in a retail application. And we can, we can analyze the, the performance of the various technology in terms of energy, annual energy consumption and in terms of overall cost. So initial, initial cost of investment and operating cost throughout the lifetime, for example, 20 years of lifespan of the, the life cycle. And we can say that uh, um, we can uh, um, show it how Air 454C is the best uh, uh, and most and most convenient solution between the various uh, technology. Uh, also, Air 449, that is a retrofit refrigerant, is a good choice. But uh, according to gas regulation, we can't use no more inside the new plant uh, because as a two P higher than um, than one thousand. So this is uh, um, uh, an overview uh, that uh, underlines the. Uh, the, the most convenient and efficient choice for the for this type of application um, in the large scale retail trade. And uh, here I would like to show you uh, our a real case study that is uh, happening in the UK. Uh, a, a customer of a retail chain decided to replace a CO2 transcritical system into a low GWP uh, refrigerant A12 system. And the result is very impressive and outstanding. As we can see, the consumption of HA4 uh, after the replacement um, is lower the, than the CO2 transcritical system. We can reach, um, and the customer reach up to 40 energy savings with respect to CO2 transcritical system. That means that uh, in, uh, in uh, then that that means that the surface of a retail point is a, a critical factor to take in consideration before to to choose the the correct technology for the for the retail point for the refrigeration system. Uh, last but not least, um, the recovery and the regeneration is a um, could uh, could help us to. To, to reach the target of, uh, of em emission reduction in, uh, by 2030, according to, to F gas regulation, and to also to develop uh, a circular uh, economy strategy. And I would like also to underline that uh, once the gas is the exhaust gas is recycled, um, the gas has a GWP uh, equal to one. So uh, in uh, so it, um, it can be reused inside the system uh, with a similar performance of the Virgin One. So I think that uh, uh, climate uh, regeneration and recovery of the gas is a, a valid solution to, uh, to support the phase down of, Ch of HFC by 2030. Uh, in conclusion, um, we can say that the uh, European uh, refrigerant gas market will be strongly oriented by gas regulation, and the critical year will be the uh, will be uh, the critical years from now on. We will be the the following one. So, for example, 2024, 2027, and 2030. So, how can we reach the reduction target of fluorinated gas emission by 2013? 2030, sorry. For what concerns existing system, we can use a one retrofit refrigerant immediately to quickly convert system that still use IGWP gases such as R404A and R507A. For what concerns new system in commercial refrigeration, as I said before, the choice between natural gases, uh, CO2 or propane, 
and GWP, HFO refrigerant, with low GWP, uh, 12 refrigerant, of course. Um, here is important to consider that there is not a single refrigerant for an application, and the choice of the system uh, must consider not only direct emission, but also indirect ones. Other, uh, other action that can help to, to reach the target of uh, uh, F-gas is the installation also of a monitoring system or leak detect or leak, or leak detector that can help uh, the market to reduce or, or eliminating gas leaks from the plants. From my side, it's all, and thank you for the kind attention. So thank you very much, Carmelo, for the presentation, and thanks to all the participants for the lively debate. I have been receiving and storing a lot of questions and comments. So let me start with the yes. first one for you. The, yes. I will start with Robert. What are, it's, it's, just, it's a simple question. What are the main advantages of flammable refrigerants over HFCs? Um, we can say that HFC has a very similar properties uh, for, of, uh, the, of the traditional gases such as f 404 a and, um, but uh, they are, um, uh, they impact less in, in, uh, to the environment because uh, um, the GWP is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is less than, uh, than uh, traditional gas. So we can, uh, we can use this, we can, uh, we can have uh, a 12 refrigerant because they are also available into the market and we have, and we have to, develop, to develop a, a rapid uh, business about uh, a 12 component because uh, uh, you can still use, uh, we, we can use no more uh, a one uh, a refrigerant with high GWP. So this is the main reason. Okay. Uh, then we have another question by Hanan uh, asking, what about glide values? What about, sorry? Glide values. Yeah, glide is um, is a parameter that is uh, very important to consider when we have to uh, dimension and sizing the heat exchanger. So um, it's important question because uh, this gas that I introduced, such as um, R455A and R454C, developed by uh, Honeywell and Camus, they are not retrofit or dropping gases. They are the gases that uh, they still um, use a new components that are confirmed and approved by uh, by the legislators, such as uh, um, uh, such Rodolfo said before. So, as Rodolfo said before, so uh, for example, these gases uh, um, uh, need to to use inside the uh, approved components, such as heat exchanger that. Uh, that you have produced, for example, for the for the Italian and European market. So we have to pay attention because uh, uh, this glide can impact in, in, in the performance of the plants. Okay, let's see, maybe Rodolfo has something to add afterwards. Yes. So um, I would like to ask the last questions for you specifically, yes. and then we move on to the debate because we have a lot of things to talk about, even if we are a bit late. So Antonio Alfredo is asking, well, it's a bit of a comment, a bit of a question. H2L is not yet 100% classified in terms of standardization, only in the 378 that it is not known to all in training installers about safety measures when applying. Um, what is your comment about this? Uh, I think that in uh, N378 is, is inside the industrial uh, world. We are uh, talking about commercial refrigeration here. And um, um, we have to we have to try to to, to shorten the delivery time to help the, the business to develop this new this new this new refrigerant inside the market uh, because if we are, if you want to under um, to to do a correct environmental assessment we are also to consider it not only the direct emission but also the indirect ones and uh, with this type of refrigerant that I introduced we can reach this type of uh, uh, this, this mission, we can, we can reach this mission with, with this type of refrigerant for, for, for a typical application. As I said before, if you go, uh, if you go up to, uh, if you go to the surface higher than 2,000 square meters for a retail point, we can see that CO2 is not convenient. So mm -hmm. we, can, we have to underline and we have to analyze every, every, every point in case by case. Yes. And Antonio is also, um giving another comment, which I guess wants your opinion about. HFOs are raising concerns at the present for PAS and in the future for the gas regulation. What do you think about this? Sorry, Siva, can you repeat that? You didn't hear us. 
HFOs are raising concerns in the present for pass and in the future for the gas regulation. So what is your comment about this? Um, yes, we have, uh, that depends about the, how will, uh, about the, the, the revision of, of a gas regulation that mm -hmm. was still, was proposed the last month and uh, depend also about the, the cut of the, or further cut quotas in, in the next couple of years. So it depends uh, um, about the, the legislation of, of a gas, or, or, or the revision of the legislation of, of, of gas in the next couple of years. Absolutely. Great. So I thank you very much for your availability. And I invite also Rodolfo and Welcome. Mr. Boni to turn on their webcams and uh, have a nice debate. Thank One you. more question to Carmelo, I think from yes. Christian, which is asking uh, the case study from UK that you showed in yes. the supermarket. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of influence of the ambient temperature for month, can you submit the details from the study? Because um, he thinks uh, that uh, the influence of ambient temperature for month, uh, you know, is a bit biased. Yeah, uh, yeah I, can, I can say that if you see the chart, uh, we, can, uh, we can see that there are, um, uh, we can see how CO2 transcritical system is very affected about uh, the warmest period of the year in uh, July and in August as you can see in the peak in July and August. Um, but if we go further and we, after, after the replacement, we see also that with the HFO uh, refrigerant system, we can uh, reach uh, a very energy saving because uh, the consumption is, very, is less than before, up to 40% energy saving. So uh, even if it is, uh, the period is November here, but also if you compare it with, the, with March of 2021, is, uh, is less you know, in every case. But uh, what about uh, comparing November with November with CO2? What is the difference between CO2 in November with November, which is uh, the period in which maybe... Uh, year, is not, year November 2020 okay. is not showed, but uh, if you can see uh, March that uh, is a similar template of November, you okay. can see a very, a very, a very different. Okay. Okay. Yes. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Carmelo. It was a pleasure. Wait to hear, please, because we have many other comments. Okay. The debate has been very, you know, very, very uh, strong, and we are going to carry on this debate. Uh, also, Rodolfo has uh, one question. Wait to address to you. Because yes, Christian is asking, in your manual, do you address the uh, end user and the installers, uh, the requirements for the unit which is inside uh, the room, the unit cooler? So say that again. So in our installation manual, in your manual we address uh, what? Do you address the user and installers, that. the requirements for yeah. the other technical installation, which are in the room? No, I'll, so our installation operating manual is specific for uh, the, the component itself, so the air heat exchanger, the unit cooler. So what we address is uh, how to handle, how to install, how to manage, how to make uh, uh, maintenance safely on the component. But uh, that, uh, of course, uh, if, there is, if there are any other interactions with the existing components, uh, our uh, installation operation manual, they cannot address uh, uh, all the other possible scenarios. So of course, uh, uh, what we say is that, uh, uh, be aware that you are operating uh, on a, a component uh, that has this intrinsic risk, uh, given the fact that it's charged with, uh, it will be charged with a flammable refrigerant. So take into consideration this aspect and these other aspects, uh, do this and do not do that. Uh, and uh, when stocking the units, uh, uh, when managing the unit, uh, when handling the unit, be careful not to compromise uh, uh, braze connections and everything. But yeah, just that, just the unit cooler. Okay, okay. Um, at the end of this meeting, I will also answer two questions which are related to me more about my presentation. So yeah, bear with absolutely. us, stay with us. So I okay. just want to I just want to please, add a comment uh, because uh, yeah uh, there was a question earlier on um, glide on this refrigerant and I just want to say that um, 
uh, on the uh, Centro Studi Galileo YouTube channel, there are some presentations that I personally made, uh, both in Italian and in English, uh, um, that address the, um, the topic on how to do the um, sizing and selection of it, it exchangers in case of uh, refrigerants with iGlide. So that is a good opportunity for you to have a look at that uh, YouTube channel to find uh, well the answer yes. to this question and some others. Yeah. Well done. I remember the webinar was very good and very interesting for the design of a good system taking advantage of the glide. Um, Absolutely. So uh, a question from um, um, Zowair from Tunisia, Landorsi, is asking uh, something that maybe most of us is, is, uh, is thinking about. Um, the COP, so the efficiency of a unit in different solution uh, that you presented um, decrease rapidly with the increase in ambient temperature. Of course, because if you increase the ambient course. temperature, the, uh, the cup decreases. It is not an handicap with this kind of refrigerants. Who wants to, to answer to that? Is the A12 uh, ambient temperature increase affect more than natural refrigerants in your opinion? Or the effect is similar if the ambient temperature increase the CO2 is decreasing, which is natural, it's physical. It's so natural it's because the, the uh, refrigeration system is affected by uh, ambient temperature for air cooled system. So it's natural that uh, the CO2 is decreased with the, uh, once the ambient temperature is higher. But yeah. uh, if I can add something, when it comes to transcritical CO2, we have this switch from subcritical to transcritical. In the, it depends on the, of course, on the efficiency of the condenser, gas cooler, and on the ambient temperature. But let's say above 23, 24 ambient uh, uh, the units, which from subcritical to transcritical, and of course the efficiency uh, decreases a lot in this switch. But there are some technologies uh, such as uh, I don't know the use of adiabatic uh, panels or other uh, system that can make this uh, subcritical operating mode longer along the year, even with ambient temperatures that are higher than, um, let's say, the standard switching uh, points. For this reason, Rodolfo, there are a lot of uh, devices that can uh, help to increase uh, the CO2 trans transcritical system, for example, a Hector or, uh, or other components. Absolutely. So Thank yeah, you. it's true that moving from subcritical to transcritical CO2, there is this drop in efficiency, but we can, try to make it uh, longer, the operating number of hours in which the system will work subcritical thanks to these uh, say, technologies that are available. And yeah, there are now stand in the, standard in the market in most of the installation location. Very good, very good. Um, we are 17 minutes late, but it's very interesting. So I'd like to answer to these two questions that they gave it in general, to, to me in general, I think, and also to you if you want to answer as well. Uh, if you want to add some questions, please add it now uh, to our speakers. The question that uh, has raised and uh, gave a bit of panic uh, in the chat was about the 20 years uh, GWP of the uh, F-gas regulation, which I think you know has been... Uh, a very, very strange uh, uh, adding in gas regulation because at the moment it's the first time a public uh, legislation point the 20 years GWP effect. But uh, at the moment it's only for information. The 20 years GWP is only for information. All the documents, all the legislations available now, even the Montreal Protocol, so also in international Kigan amendments, is all on one year GWP. Uh, so let's see what's uh, happening in the future. You know, we saw so different changes uh, through the years. Maybe in the future we will say we will see 20 years GLP. But now, the 20 GLP, 20 years GLP is only for information. Nothing else. Don't consider it when you do your calculation, whatever, because now it's only 100 years GLP. So don't be uh, from 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 this information. Don't be. Uh, distracted, we can say. Don't be distracted because uh, it's not uh, it's not the case at the moment. Uh, so don't uh, focus on the twenty years at the moment. 
Another thing that has been raised is about um, uh, what I said at the beginning, the air conditioning speed systems with hydrocarbons. Uh, how can we accept them in the market? It's not easy to accept them in the market. There are no air conditioning speed system at the moment with a uh, speed system. And we want to move straight away to propane air conditioning system. Having, uh, in Europe only, we have, I think, 20 million uh, speed systems every year in our market. Uh, in Italy alone, 1 million space system every year. And they want in 2027 to have um, uh, mandatory, uh, so ban of uh, uh, with G more with GLP. And uh, I'm saying, Carmelo, I don't think at the moment existed HFO with GLP minor 150 in air conditioning. I saw some news about a new gas uh, but it's, yes. it's still in the there news, is, you know, it's still in the news. Um, uh, unfo unfortunately, there is not present in the market uh, 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 a refrigerant gas with a GWP less than 150 that is in class A1 in refrigeration, in commercial refrigeration. Only A2L refrigerant. For this reason, it's very important to develop a new component that is approved. But in our condition, it's fixed system. We should Air test it first. Um, we, nobody has tested any A12 well yet uh, in space systems. Uh, air conditioning system, I saw only, I know only Air 32, but uh, as, as it would be higher than 150. So I don't know what will be, uh, what will be F-gas regulation uh, in AC conditioner speed system. Let's see, I can see also some comments. I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, I saw in the news uh, new gas uh, uh, coming out. Let's see, because there are a lot of news, of course, so we have to see in the market. But uh, as that from Egypt asking how to make it acceptable. Okay, a lot of training before having new market the system. We cannot do any training afterwards because if we do training afterwards, the system is already there and nobody can know how to, to, to install it properly, to be honest. So I think it's like chicken and eggs. You want first the chicken or first the eggs? I think uh, you know we want the training first. And I, I would like to add uh, one thing, Marco. That uh, in uh, for the, for this reason, in, uh, I saw that in the market uh, the, the request of uh, of propane inside the plug-in system of the lower cap of of, the, of the lower cap capacity is became higher and higher. So we have to um, to to training how our installers to. Uh, to manage propane because it's an explosive uh, refrigerant gas, so we have to pay particular attention to this yeah. question. And a lot of uh, uh, knowledge and a lot of uh, capabilities and a lot of awareness. To be honest, uh, the best technician, which is maybe distracted, can go in an R32 units uh, and then found out that it's not R32 units because he didn't read properly the label, or maybe he can be distracted. Uh, so a lot of awareness, awareness that we will have in the future more flammable refrigerants. And so more awareness and more pay attention when you're doing your job, being very attent, very you know, concentrated on your job. It's very important what you're doing and you have to do it properly and well. So there are any other comments from you? Uh, except on the, okay, there is one from Mirko Bortoloso asking what we think about uh, the exception. <laughs> okay, the exception is not clear. Exception, you can accept, so using higher GLP refrigerant when required to meet safety standards. What I think the commission says there, uh, because probably you remember there has been a report uh, commissioned by the commission, uh, saying that in many countries, like in Italy, in France, in UK, in public places, there are safety requirements where you cannot put flammable refrigerants. So if there are national safety requirements, you can move to higher than GLP 150. But it's very vague. It's not properly you know, legislated. So pay attention in following it. And also, you know, Carmelo will uh, will for sure confirm. Pay attention that in the future, probably you're not going to find any more for a four for ten a because of course if, if hey, face, face down, down, face down, the face down is so rapid. 
How can you say I, and I the price is increasing? Refrigerant if it's not available in the market, you have to find it uh, maybe in some stock uh, somewhere, maybe where it's not able to find it. Uh, uh, a small stock in a in, in a storage uh, with uh, a high you price. Have to, you have to push for the regeneration of the gas uh, market, of course. True. True. And uh, because uh, for this reason, also the price of HFC with high GWP, such as R four one and zero A, is going higher for the for the gas quotes. And uh, if... one question for you, Carmelo, then we can end. I think the prices, prices of HFC and HFO in the future. Please tell us what is the prices. <laughs> <laughs> I can say the price, but uh, we can uh, we can still, of course, say that. Uh, um, to reach the, the target of, uh, of F gas by 2030, the, the price will be increased for HFC and uh, will be go down for HFO refrigerants. This is the trend. Okay. Okay, I think uh, CO2 and propane are, uh, are, uh, are economy, so <laughs> are very cheap. <laughs> so. Can I ask if you want to turn on the webcam of one of our participants? Yes, Adolfo, do you want to say a few words? Then we have also one comment by our trainer, Marisa Kandi, you want to say a few words um, of thank you. But please, Rodolfo first, do you want to do some comments first? No, no, no. I mean, uh, I think um, we have addressed this uh, very interesting topic. And there is the fact that uh, there is uh, this... Um, uh, currently, this lack of uh, expertise when it comes to handling, installing, uh, managing, uh, designing uh, with refrigerants that are flammable uh, refrigerants, uh, and the, the need to to do to have a trained uh, um, group of uh, uh, people is uh, essential to have uh, the Rodolfo, things installed you, properly. And are you happy with a uh, gas proposal? I mean, I think that uh, you know, this it's could very have been, yeah, yeah that could have been question. more, uh, that could have been more, uh, let's say, strict when it comes to uh, the, the, the 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 limits of GWP. Uh, that uh, revision could have been more uh, say, stronger in order to reach uh, this um, to reach the, the the final goal more rapidly, especially in uh, in the country, the rich countries. Uh, such as uh, such uh, such as Europe, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the revision, but uh, we have missed an opportunity to to make it uh, stronger and shorter. And More ambitious. Facing uh, and facing down some very high GWP refrigerants. It's more strictly, yeah. Thank you, thank you. I leave the word to Marisa Kande, our trainer, uh, president of UFRIARC. Always uh, very welcome to Madi. Always very nice to have you here, and always to conclude our webinar with a nice words of hope. Madi, thank you so much, Marco. Thank you to everyone. Good morning, Carmelo. Great job, and morning both as well. Uh, of course, uh, you are talking about uh, real opportunity and also real challenges in the refrigeration sector. So we have to save our environment and meanwhile we have to save ourselves. So flammable refrigerant is, is an important new technologies, but it's also a very, very, very big issue for technician and not only technician, the hand user of uh, our equipment or cooling devices uh, using flammable refrigerant. I think this webinar is, uh, is a great job, is uh, very nice. And we have to continue in this way, in this uh, for raising the awareness to talk with also the trainer, the technician in Africa. As you know, we already have air conditioner with the propane 219 uh, already available in African market. And of course, we have to share the dear awareness. We have to raise the commitment and on the flame memory refrigerant. In, in this way with Marco Boni, um, we organized next Saturday, uh, probably Marco just told that to you, uh, next Saturday is, is May 21st. So on three days, we will have a new webinar on a flammable refrigerant, but focus in African continent. So I will, um, in this way, invite all the attendees of this uh, webinar 
of course, to register themselves on the platform of Utriac. You can find the link on, on Utriac on, on, in LinkedIn or we, uh, Utriac uh, Facebook page, and you can get the link. Of course, also send to Studi Galileo can provide to all of you the link. Um, after that, we by mailing, then you can register yourself and participate to this uh, webinar. I know we have a lot of uh, technician across the continent, Africa. We have people from Egypt. We have people from Central Africa. We are connected. Of course, we would like all of you to participate on this. This is the jointly um, activity, activity made between Utriac and ARIA. As you know, until last Friday, Marco Bono was the president, and we had signed last year an MOU between ARIA European Association of and UTRIAC, the African Association. We want to work side by side together for a win-win, new technologies for safety of this planet that we support to give uh, something to the next generation, to a future generation. We have to give them a clean world and an affordable also techni uh, technical equipment. And we have this duty to do now. So we are calling all of you, all technicians across the continent, even from Tunisia. I see Mr. Land Landolfo, one of the, our uh, trans uh, interpret for this webinar. I remember that the webinar will be in directly in, in English, but the translation, we are, will have a simultaneous translation in, in French, in Arabic, and Portuguese. This is the first time we made this uh, webinar with uh, four languages because the main language is in English. So all of you, of course, are welcome and you can share also the link to those who, are, who speak Portuguese and Arabic because in Africa, as you know, we are talking, speaking a lot of languages and somehow it's an opportunity and somehow it's also a barrier to get everyone together. We are missing only Spanish because we have African country who, a Equatorial Guinea, where we speak Spanish. Unfortunately, we don't have the possibility of a translator in Spanish, but we can expect to have 53 can African countries on Saturday. Marco, what thank you to everyone. Of course, uh, we will uh, work on it and we will continue to share knowledge, awareness, a commitment in order to keep the refrigeration has, I think, refrigeration sector is the industry of this century. We refrigeration sector, we can change the world. I believe in deeply in this. Of course, we need to involve more ladies in this activity. So I uh, expect here we have Sylvia, of course, we have has, but I expect to have also more ladies, technician in refrigeration sector. As you know, at the end of the day, the domestic um, equipment are mostly used by ladies. And if we made, uh, as a technician, we manufacture a, a affordable and um, efficient equipment, and they give, we give this equipment, and this equipment will be used by somebody who doesn't know how it work. Unfortunately, we can keep our COP six or seven in our laboratory because it will put the refrigerator close to the hole. And at the end of the day, we cannot have a hand user the CO2 that we printed and put on the equipment. Ladies, more ladies in rack sector is my last call. And I think I will give back the floor to Marco. Thank you. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Carmelo, Nipogasis. Thank you, Luven, our partners. Thank you. Thank it was you. very nice having you here. We are half an hour late, but it's worth it because it's very interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Marty. 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 Thank you, Marty.